I just recognize everybody's trying to do the best they can and they really benefit from very specific strategies of how to communicate more effectively and how to, how to just get into a place where they're not carrying around that negative conversation or texting exchange all day long and it's impacting their sense of well-being or their interaction with their child because they're feeling discouraged and impatient. Yeah, it makes, and I'm sure, you know, going through a divorce, all of those things are just going to be magnified. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, when in your work with high conflict couples, do you see any common themes in terms of um, issues that come up? Yeah, I see there's times when I, I wish, like if I could have, wave a web, magic wand, I would, I would have parents or co-parents not make assumptions about who the other person is because they had a, had a time together as a couple. So I'll, I'll hear parents say, ah, well, I just know how she is. Or, you know, well, I just know him. And I know this is what is happening right now. And the thing is, is even within a few months after a separation occurs, there's so much transfer, transformation that happens within that person. And sometimes it's totally wonderful and healthy and other times it's not. But when they make these generalizations, well, like I know he's, you know, a selfish jerk because I was married to him for, you know, 12 years and that's just how he is. And a lot of times it's, it's difficult to, to just have them separate from their preconceived um, perspective of that person and recognize that they could have changed. It doesn't mean they necessarily even change for the better, but don't make an assumption that you know exactly what they're thinking and what they're going to do. Because when you go through a divorce, you naturally slant towards assuming that they're doing something negative or they're just trying to hurt you. And it just muddies the water. And so that's a hard concept to convey. And I have to be very careful of whether or not I even bring that up as a possibility, because I certainly don't want parents to ever feel dismissed or like I'm simplifying their relationship. But I know as a divorced person myself, um, my, my ex-husband is a different person now, you know, he's, he's, he's remarried, he's, he's lived a life and that life changed from the moment we stopped living together. And so if I catch myself thinking like, well, I know how he is, then I think, nope, you don't know how he is. And that allows me to approach an interaction with a little bit more of a fresh take. I really love, love that because I think that gives it an extra nuance, the fact that you've actually been through it and you've, you've seen over the course of the time you've been divorced, how the relationship has evolved, you know, as you both have, cause I know you're, you're remarried as well. So you, mm-hmm. you kind of have a true blended family and I believe your ex-husband has, I mean, your current husband has children also yes. from his previous I have, marriage. I have okay. four stepchildren. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. How yeah. long are they? What are their age ranges? So the youngest stepchild is um, the same almost to the day age as my daughter, the one who's on the podcast with me. And then he has three boys that are older and his oldest boy just turned 26. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the oldest boy, like he never lived with me. He was already launched by the time I came along. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't like I was ever in a situation where I was parenting him. And so that allows our relationship to look differently. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that I do a lot of work with blended families. I do a lot of work, particularly with stepmoms, because that can be such a a confusing and sort of unappreciated role. And there's a lot of things that stepmothers can do to sort of, that makes their life much, much harder. And so I, I love working with that population too, because it oftentimes can have a high conflict element if they're dealing with their new spouse's co-parent, or maybe they're actively trying to co-parent with somebody, you know, that they were in a prior relationship, and then they're trying to navigate a new marriage. So I'm not a marriage counselor by any means. I want to make that really clear to your, your audience. I'm really come from the mindset of kind of the family systems, you know, child and adolescent perspective, but I have just worked so hard to be a parent coach that is a really strong resource for parents who are trying to support their kids as they grow into productive, you know, emotionally regulated, hopefully happy people. Yeah. And, you know, as you were talking through that, it, it is, a, I, I, you know, I come from a family systems background as well. And, you know, it, 
I often say when someone goes through a divorce, it's, it's um, not like you don't no longer have a family. The family's just changing shape and changing form. So I was imagining that as you were describing that scenario where you have two people that they're in their second marriages and they're co-parenting with previous spouses and there's kids from both marriages that are blended together and how that could actually end up being a really beautiful thing. It sounds mm-hmm. very complicated and, and potentially a lot of high conflict when you think about it, but as long as you can move through and evolve, then you can get to a place where it's actually a beautiful thing and you actually complement each other's lives in a way that you didn't anticipate. Well, I think that brings me to another point I want to mention is that oftentimes people will think that their relationship with their co-parent or with their new spouse's co-parent has to either be on or off. That it has to be, we have strong boundaries, we don't talk every time we do connect, it's completely kid focused and um, a conversation can be very abrupt and there can be assumptions of what the other person's thinking. Or they think that they need to have a co-parenting relationship where they're all around the same Thanksgiving table. And sometimes in those situations, there can be blurred lines as far as boundaries and there can be um, just a, a lot of room for not really forming a household that's unique to your couplehood. Okay. And so I tell parents, like if, if each parent has, has the right to form a relationship with their child, that's unique and create a household that reflects their parenting style. Now, should there be some big ticket things that are consistent across houses? Absolutely. But they don't need to be identical. And I think that kids really benefit from their parents being authentic and and not getting caught up in like what the other parent might think if they do things a little casually or they're a little bit more structured. But just to go back to that point is there's, I think the most effective co-parenting relationships are ones where everybody can recognize that this other person can push buttons. Like they had a long history together, assumptions were made, disappointment were experienced. And this other person is just going to be perceived as annoying or frustrating or clueless or whatever adjective that's negative can fit in there. But to go into it with an an idea that, okay, this other person is going to mess up and we're just going to kind of get past it. Like, I don't need my co-parent to be this good friend that never lets me down. I need them to be a decent parent. Yes. Yeah. And And so, yes, yes. I love that flexibility because I think there is this, uh, I know with my clients, they feel this pressure, you know, oh, I've got to be great friends with this person. I got to be willing to take them on vacation. And, Mm -hmm. you know, even though we're divorced for the, the, otherwise the kids are going to be ruined. (laughs) So I I, I learned this. I have to say, so my husband's ex-wife, it was such a great role model for this. And so was my husband. So um, you know, if one person in that co-parenting relationship is maybe a little bit more of a hothead, maybe somebody who says things that are just a tad more impulsive, right? So one of them would do something like that. The other person would be annoyed or frustrated and say, hey, you know what? Let's talk about this later and hang up. The person who felt like frustrated has a mindset of, oh, well, we just start over later. <laughs> 